Welcome to the Electronics Tools for Beginners video series. I'm going to be doing a video every single day, so make sure you subscribe to make sure you don't miss those. Also be a playlist down in the description and at the end of the video as well to go and watch more of the video series. So make sure you check them out. So in this video I'm going to talk about decade boxes. Now I've got a few different ones here, I've actually got some other ones tucked away as well, but these ones got to hand. There's decade capacitors, decade resistors, you can get decade inductors that I don't actually have a decade inductor, I should probably get one. This is a box I made myself, these are just some switches I actually got from work because they were throwing them out, so I had some switches, so that's quite handy. This will do up to basically 10 meg. So this is mega ohms, this is kilo ohms, that's ohms, and that's milli ohms there, so hundreds of milli ohms. I built this myself, it's pretty easy, it's just a box which has got decade switches on it, and you just switch in resistors which are fairly positioned. Now when I actually did this one, I didn't use position resistors, I used selected resistors. So I went through and selected resistors that were basically very close to the correct value, or if not exactly the right value. It took me ages, but this gives me this little homemade box. You can do it yourself if you want. If you've got a decent multimeter, you can actually do the same process, build your own box. It's relatively cheap. Now I think you've got some banana jacks on the back here, which have also got these thread terminals if you really want to. Over here on the back is a Heathkit Decade Resistance box. I actually did a video on this, I did a bit of a refurb on it. It's basically okay. The sisters in this are fairly precise, they're not great, they're alright, but it's ballpark stuff. But this only goes up to 1 meg, basically, it's the highest it will go to. And the smallest it do is 1 ohm. Here I have a decade capacitance box, and this is something I actually need to refurbish, I haven't done this one yet, I think. I need to have a look at it and actually see how it actually goes as far as accuracy. It doesn't do a lot, this is quite a limited range on this one, but yeah, it's capacitances. C could be handy. And talk about handy, here's a handy 75 from Syncor. This is how I definitely need to do refurbishment on. It's got carbon resistors in here which are probably off value by now. Got some wire rounds which are probably fine. Got capacitors and rectifiers over here. Silicon and selenium apparently. I think these were paper caps and I think these ones here were electrolytic caps and so all these would be bad but this has got like a weird setup in here for the capacitors so I haven't bothered refurbishing this one yet but it will happen, and it's going to choose between 1 watt and half watt resistors, which is different values here, times 1000 or times 1, depending on what this is. So this is like a general purpose one, I suppose. Yeah, I haven't really played around with this one, because I need to actually refurbish it. It's been sitting on my desk for ages, waiting to be done. I've had this thing for a few years now, actually. I really should get around to it. And over here, this isn't really a decade box, in not in that sense, anyway. But I thought I'd mention it anyway, because it's a Fluke A90 current shunt. And what this has got inside it is some precision resistors. And the idea is you, you pass your load through these terminals here, and this will output a voltage over here relative to that current. So basically passes through resistors are inside it. But these are using precision resistors, so it's quite a good reference. And you can do like what, one milliamp through these terminals. So it uses these terminals for these ones. So it's up to one amp in these terminals. And these two terminals are for the 10 amp range. And so it just basically gives you a voltage across the shunt out of here. But you can actually use this as a resistor because you can plug your meter into here and you can actually measure the resistance of these shunts. And even across here as well, you can even measure it there as well as you switch between each one. But, uh, in a way, it's kind of a decade resistor, but it's only got six ranges. So I'll show you this actually, just a, rather than just describing it, I'll stick this on here. This isn't the best connection because I'm using probes, it's not low contact resistance and stuff like that. but. We'll see, these are Tellurian copper connections on here as well, they're high quality. So, see, in the 0.1 milliamp range, it's got 1k resistance now. There's some lead resistance on here, so 1k there. So, 1 milliamp is doing 100 ohms. 10 milliamps is doing 10 ohms. 100 milliamps is doing 1 ohm. 1 amp is doing 0.1 ohms, but you can see I've got this offset here. I can't quite get rid of. If I go over to the 10 amp range, which is these terminals here, let's get on, and we're getting like down there as well, same sort of thing, but see contact resistance here is an issue, I'm trying to get down to, it should be 0.01 ohms, I'm not really getting it down there, so yeah, like I said, this is basically a resistor, but it's a position one, it can take a lot of current, so I thought I'd show you this too, this is the home built one here, I've zeroed it out to basically say that there's nothing on there, so it's allowing for switch resistances and cables and stuff like that. So let's do 100 milliohms. Yeah, it's pretty close. 1 ohm. 
10 ohms, 100 ohms, so that one's out a little bit more, still below 1% though, it's only a quarter of a percent, 1k, that's pretty good, 10k, 100k, below 1% out, 1 meg, just over 1% out. So really I think that on the mega range I should probably look at changing those resistors but it doesn't really matter that much. It's pretty precise. So that just goes to show that you can build yourself something and it will be pretty good if you take the time to building it and actually selecting resistors and choosing the ones which you've got the best accuracy. Yeah, I mean if you use 1% resistors as well it'd probably be better. I mean I was using 5% resistors and I just selected the best ones I could find in the ones I had. Found that interesting, I've got to share the video to people you may think may be interested in videos. Um, I don't really show you much about these, they're just a little bit of basic stuff, it's upside down. Um, click like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and I'll catch you next video. Playlist down there for the rest of the beginner series. There's a playlist here, YouTube thinks you should watch, there's a subscribe link here, which you should click on. And there's a Patreon support link over there if you feel like you want to donate to the channel, help me to make more videos. Bye.